Okay, I want to talk about Fort Armstrong. The previous videos I had, I talked about forts along the Fort King Row. We start with Fort Brook on Tampa Bay, go up to the Little Hillsborough River. We have Fort Foster, then Fort Dade on the Withlacoochee River. And this is the next one along the line, Fort Armstrong, which was about half a mile from uh, what is today the front entrance of Dade Battlefield Park. So it's uh, right near where Dade's command fell in December 1835. Now, Fort Armstrong actually has a historical marker. Where is it? Or a monument, I should say. This is the monument about 1998, so, you know, 25, 26 years ago. Uh, just a stone with a sign there by the side of the roadway. That's what, County Road 476, I think. If you go out the front entrance of Dade Battlefield, the next street over is the County Road, and you'll see over to the side the uh, marker where it's at. Anyway, it has a bronze plaque, and it said put up by the S Sumter County Historical Society. I think that's 1982. I would have thought that would have been longer ago. And it talks about some of the things that happened. General Call's failed campaign, uh, which uh, may have stopped here, but they really didn't uh, stay at Fort Armstrong. Fort Armstrong was actually built afterwards and here is the marker today this was actually about six months ago uh, somebody took a nice picture and uh, the county put a little walkway up to it so you can park your car and walk up right to it and read the plaque and there's a map from the Seminole War Heritage Trail so that's really nice I'm glad they put that up uh, so a similar uh, when you see the Battle of Wahoo Swamp nearby now, Fort Armstrong uh, was uh, near the Battle of Wahoo Swamp, about six or eight miles away from where the battle was. And the Battle of Wahoo Swamp was in November 1836. There was actually three different battles, November 17th, 18th, 21st, 1836. The troops coming and going actually camped on the side of what later became Fort Armstrong. And the Tennessee volunteers were involved in the Battle of Wahoo Swamp. And they built Fort Armstrong, I think, uh, about a couple months later in December 1836. Now, there's more than one group from Tennessee. Uh, this group that fought in the Battle of Wahoo Swamp and built the fort, named it after their commanding general, uh, Robert Armstrong and then they immediately after that went back to Tampa Bay and went home uh, and I'm going to read, read a newspaper article here in a minute. There was another group of Tennessee volunteers under William Waterdale at, you know, at the following year and they fought at the Battle of Loxahatchee so there's more than one group of Tennessee volunteers uh, you know, sometimes it's easy to confuse them so let's talk about the origin of the fort. Well, we, I found an article here in the National Banner and uh, Nashville Whig newspaper, January 18th, 1838, said from the volunteers, Tennessee volunteers at New Orleans, Osceola not taken, Dade's Massacre Ground named Fort Armstrong. Actually, you know, Fort Armstrong's not the same site. It's about half a mile away. Account of the massacre, voyage to New Orleans. Pay for dead horses should be provided by the government. Um, not sure if they got that part. I think eventually they did. And I won't read the whole article here, but from the National Banner, New Orleans, January 8th, 1837. So coincidentally, the anniversary of the Battle of New Orleans on January 8th, which was uh, uh, 22 years earlier. <laughs> uh, the Tennessee volunteers are writing, Dear Sir, the Brigade of Tennessee Volunteers have all arrived at this place, they're speaking of New Orleans, where the men will be paid and mustered out of service forthwith. Three or four of the Nashville steamboats are lying here 
nearly ready to return, and their commanders have kindly preferred to wait a few days until the volunteers are discharged, mm -hmm. that they may have a convenient and speedy passage to their homes. I have but little additional information to give in relation to the war. All has turned out as I predicted. Osceola doubtless thought prudence the better part of valor and accordingly avoided everything like a farewell conflict with the drunken cow drivers as this chief ship, as we understand, has courteously dubbed our brigade. So Osceola is calling the Tennessee volunteers drunken cow drivers, <laughs> which I find funny. We left Volusia on the St. John's on the 12th of December for Tampa Bay and proceeded as far as Dade's Massacre, which is situated about halfway between the two points and with six miles of the celebrated Wahoo Swamp. Here we encamped and set out a party of friendly creeks as spies to ascertain whether or not the Seminoles had abandoned the stronghold, which they defended with such desperation on the 18th and 21st of November, talking about the Battle of Wahoo Swamp. This party returned to reported that the Seminoles had left the swamp, that there was but little sign of their having been here lately, and that a few trails perceptible all appeared to be going in southern directions. The general impression there was that their plan was, if possible, to evade all pursuit. The army stayed at this place several days, established a depot here, during which time the country was accorded uh, for miles around uh, the, I'm sorry, in which the country was scoured for miles around in every direction and every additional discovery, but tended to confirm our first impression as to the place of their retreat. So it's a corn tall signs the Seminoles are heading south. This fort located within a few hundred yards of the spot where the gallant Dade and his intrepid little band were overwhelmed by superior number of a ruthless foe and fell victim to savage bar barbarity in honor of General Armstrong, was called by General Jessup Fort Armstrong. I know that but few places with which I would sooner have my name associated the peculiar circumstances of that event will give its conspicuous place in history of the country and give immortality to the scene of its occurrence. Here it was that about 110 men were waylaid on their march by a secret wily foe. I go on and, yeah, talking about day battle. And I don't need to go over that because we, we've heard all that. Now, there's only one post return of Fort Armstrong. So, it was only active for about a month and a half, uh, or maybe t two months at the most. And he here's the one post return monthly return of troops, detachment from several regiments and corps at Fort Armstrong, Florida, in the service of the United States, uh, under the command of Major S. Uh, Sylvester Churchill, uh, Third Regiment of Artillery. Uh, Inspector General and Army of the South from the uh, 21st of January, 1837, or 31st, I'm sorry, small print. Um, uh, Major Churchill, he was the Inspector General, so he's the guy who would uh, muster in and out the volunteer regiments into the United States Army. But looking on this uh, uh, post return actually it's pretty interesting you'll see it has medical staff first artillery second artillery third artillery fourth artillery fourth infantry sixth infantry and there near the bottom it says uh army recruits uh i think two of them and marines it has a detachment of marines uh about 82 here at the fort so that's interesting and one of them is of note, and we'll get to that in a minute. A total of uh, 184 at the post plus. There's 225 Creek Indians. This is the Creek Indian Regiment of the United States. Um, this is one third of the regiment here, so that's actually pretty important. It said Major Churchill, 
Inspector General, Army of the South, First Lieutenant uh, D.H. Tufts, uh, something, something, uh, Superintendent, Commissary of uh, Subsistence. I think that's what that says. It says at the very bottom in the notes, and this is where you find some inf interesting information. Uh, it says three Negro men, two Negro women, one Indian boy and one Indian girl, prisoners captured from Indian camp. And we're going to read more about that in a minute. And here's the officers at the post. You have uh, Major Churchill. You have Captain Zetzinger, which uh, he, he was at Fort Brook when we talked about Fort Brook. Uh, Lieutenant Tufts, uh, is it second Lieutenant Morgan is the adjutant. And L. Twiggs, Captain of the Marines, that's Levi Twiggs. He is the son of Colonel David Twiggs of the Dragoons, So, uh, but he's in the Marines, so this is interesting. And I can't read the last name. And S. Forey, that's Samuel Forey, Assistant Surgeon. Um, uh, Surgeon Forey, his journals are actually reprinted in early issues of the Florida Historical Quarterly, I think volume six or, or seven. So that's the only post return we have. Uh, but it's very interesting. Now, here's a letter of General Jessup that sheds a little light on it. Uh, General Jessup, it says, Headquarters Army of the South. Now, just know that when it says it's General Jessup's headquarters, the headquarters are where General Jessup is. It could be at any fort. So right now, the headquarters of the Army is at Fort Armstrong because that is where General Jessup is residing for the moment. He's writing to at Army Adjutant General in Washington, General Brigadier uh, Brigadier General Roger Jones. Uh, General Jessup says, Sir, I only have time to say that a detachment from this army surprised a camp of Indian Negroes and made 16 prisoners. They are of Powell's band. That means they're of Osceola's band. And the mounted men are now in full pursuit of that chief. Uh, of course, they didn't catch him at this point. The enemy is nowhere found to, in great force. Great body of the Seminole are said to be south. The movement of the regular army come up, which will probably be tomorrow. I shall either send or take a heavy detachment in that direction. Kind of the neat thing is, you know, I was able to transcribe this letter. And here's a letter from Major Churchill uh, to G General Jones in Washington. Ford Armstrong, he says, stayed battleground. February 1st, 1837, so about three weeks later. I have the honor to enclose herewith the return of forces at the post, composed of inefficient uh, men of the regiment, which are gone east with General Jessup and Captain Twiggs, son of the Colonel Twiggs, Company of Marines for the last day of January. So pretty much those soldiers who couldn't keep up, who kind of left them here, that's why he calls them. Uh, composed of inefficient men of the regiments. The general marched from here on the 22nd. I have not heard from him since. I am left here in command in consequence of having received a bust in my left shoulder and side by the falling of a tire on the 14th, with which rendered me for a few days unfit for active service. So apparently Major Churchill fell off the wagon when the wheel came off. General Jessup has gone south. At this point, he has gone down to Hatchelusty Creek, which is now called Reedy Creek, and had a major battle involving the Marines and the Creek Indians, Battle of Hatchelusty Creek in late January 1837. So that's where they are right now. So kind of interesting connecting uh, to the history down there. And fortunately, a lot of these letters from Jessup at this period are printed in the congressional uh, cir circulars. Um, this is a congressional report, uh, basically Jessup's report of his two-year campaign in Florida. So it's easy to transcribe these letters when you can also find it in the congressional record. 
And General Jessup here, writing from Fort Armstrong, January 19th, 1837. I have arrived, I have this moment arrived at this post in advance of the troops and have completely swept the swamps and hammocks of the Withlacoochee from Fort King Road to Fort Clinch, not the Fort Clinch up in Fernie. He's talking to Fort Clinch at the mouth of the Withlacoochee River. Um, so, you know, not that far away. And I'm positive that there are no parties of Indians exceeding 10 warriors on the river in the neighborhood. The prisoners represent Powell as flying from one hiding place to another with only three warriors. So that's the uh, prisoners that they mentioned there at the swamp. I'm going to. Uh... OK, I'm going to go forth from here. I don't have to read the whole thing. Uh, next, we have a letter. On January 20th. 1837. Uh, this is also by General Jessup to Brigadier General Roger Jones, headquarters of the Army at South, Fort Armstrong near Dade's Battleground, January 20th, 1837. And I arrived here yesterday with a small mounted corps and a few Indian warriors from Fort Clinch. The Marines and regular troops came into that day. All the swamps and hammocks as far down as General Gaines' battleground have been examined. That means as far down as Camp Izzard. Uh, with no other results than the breaking up of a Negro settlement in the Panasofki Swamp, uh, that's near where Fort McClure is, and the capture of 52 Negroes and three Indians. So no doubt sent to Fort Brook. Powell, or he's talking about Osceola, was in the swamp with the Negroes, but escaped. The prisoners say attended by only three warriors. The Indians are represented as flying in small parties from swamp to swamp, almost naked. A part of them were represented, represented by a prisoner to have taken refuge in a large swamp south of the mouth of which with the Coochie, I have detached Lieutenant Colonel Foster to attack or capture them. So Colonel Frost, Foster is going on a campaign, and uh, I could read his letter, too. It happened at the same time the Battle of Camp Monroe happened at the in uh, February 1837. Colonel Foster actually had a small battle and campaign moving at night on uh, Crystal River. So that's kind of interesting. So we're going to go to the next letter here. General Jessup, again writing to General Jones, Headquarters Army of the South, Fort Armstrong, January 21st, 1837, half past nine o'clock p.m., so writing at night. Uh, General Jessup says, Sir, an Indian runner has this moment come in from Lieutenant Colonel Foster's command with intelligence of the troop having overtaken a party of hostile Indians and Negroes, of which they killed two, and captured 11 Indians and nine Negroes, the remainder escape. The Indians are represented as desirous for peace, and I've directed Lieutenant Colonel Foster to send one of the prisoners to invite them to come in. I march tomorrow morning at sunrise to the head of the Okawaha. I have your honor to be your obedient service. Uh, Thomas Sidney Jessup, Major General Commanding. So, General Jessup Slayer on his campaign. Next, we have another letter. Uh, it's, uh, let's see, who is this? I think this also General Jessup. And he's writing from Fort Armstrong in February 7th, 1837. He went down, fought in the Battle of Hatchelusty Creek, and came back, and he's back at Fort Armstrong. So we know Fort Armstrong still visible, uh, still operating here in February but will be soon abandoned. And so I'm not going to read all of the letter. I do have it from the congressional record. He's talking about the Battle of Hatchelusty Creek with commanded by Colonel Heads Henderson, who's the Commandant of the Marines, and had Conference of the Chiefs, Jumper Algar and Abraham. And soon after, Joan Jessup will meet uh, with the chiefs at 
the the Fort Dade, what we call the Fort Dade capitulation. Uh, so I think that's it. Okay. Okay, that is Fort Armstrong. <laughs> I uh, read the uh, post returns and some of the letters from General Jessup of some of the things that he was doing at the time. Next video, I'm going to talk about Fort McClure on Lake Panasofsky, the next fort up in the Fort King Road that Major Day never made it to. Actually, Fort McClure was not there, but it was the other stop. And I'll tell more about that in the future. And I hope you enjoyed it.